Hello, this is Chef John from FoodWishes.com with Picadillo. That's right, we are right in the middle of comfort food season, and this delicious Cuban concoction certainly fits the bill. Although, depending on who you're talking to, this could be a Dominican or Puerto Rican concoction. But when in doubt, we'll stick with the alliteration. And it really doesn't matter because I'm going to show you my twist on this anyway. So with that little bit of a disclaimer, let's go ahead and get started. And what we'll do first here is heat a pan containing a little bit of olive oil over medium-high heat, to which we will add our ground beef. And then armed with some kind of spoon or spatula, we're going to perform what we call in the business the old cook and crumble. And all that means is we're going to break up this beef as it comes up to temperature into as small a pieces as we want. So you're going to see how fine I break mine up. But you might prefer yours a little chunkier, or you may go the other way and pulverize it right down to a paste. Now, for semi-obvious reasons, a flat edge tool is the best choice here. But having said that, any kind of spoon or spatula should work. So what we'll do is continue to cook and crumble that over medium-high heat until that meat has been browned and broken up to our liking, at which point we will stop and toss in our diced onion along with a nice big pinch of salt. And what we want to do is cook those onions for about three or four minutes or until they turn translucent. And you hear us use that term quite often, and all that means is you're going to cook your onions until those little pieces turn from bright white to sort of see-through. And ideally, they're going to look something like this. And then once that's been accomplished, what we're going to do is stop and perform one of our favorite tricks. What we'll do is toss in our spices and cook those a little bit before we add our liquid ingredients. So let's go ahead and toss in some freshly ground black pepper, as well as some ground cumin, or cumin if you prefer. We will also toss in a little bit of cinnamon, as well as not one, but two bay leaves. And then last but not least, we'll finish up with some cayenne. And then what we'll do is stir that in and cook it for about two minutes. And basically the purpose of this is to wake up and intensify those flavors, as well as help infuse that olive oil and rendered beef fat with all that spicy goodness. So we'll let that all cook together for a couple minutes. And do not be afraid if you see a little bit of caramelization happening at the bottom of the pan. That is completely normal and desirable. And then once we've toasted those spices for a couple minutes, we'll go ahead and toss in our garlic and cook that for about a minute. And sure, to save a step, we probably could have added that to the onions. But we're usually guarding against that garlic getting too cooked and too browned, which sometimes leads to an off flavor. So for me, it's a little safer to throw it in at this point and cook it for about a minute, which is what we're doing. And then once that's set, we can go ahead and add in our liquid ingredients. And there's going to be two. First up, we're going to deglaze with some red wine vinegar, or I guess any vinegar you want. As well as, we're also going to add some crushed tomatoes. And as usual with dishes like this, there's a million different variations. And some call for tomato sauce, some call for tomato paste, some call for diced fresh tomatoes. But personally, I go with the crushed. As well as a little splash of water that we'll use to rinse out our can or container. And we'll give that a stir. And while we're waiting for that to come back to temperature and start simmering again, we can go ahead and grab and toss in another very important ingredient, the raisins. Except I'm not using raisins, I'm using currants, which are really nothing more than little tiny raisins. And while the flavor profile is identical, I much prefer the texture of these. I'm sorry, but I'm just not into biting into large, wet, plump, hot raisins. I find that very off-putting. But of course, that's up to you. You are the Michael Bay of what people inappropriately call Sloppy Jose. So yes, this is somewhat similar to the good old-fashioned American Sloppy Joe, in both appearance and the savory, sweet, and sour flavor profile. But having said that, I can tell you right now, this is at least 9 to 10 times more delicious. But anyway, we will add our currants or raisins, and wait for this to come back to a simmer, at which point we'll reduce our heat to medium-low. We will cover this, and we'll let it cook for about 15 to 20 minutes, or until we're happy with the tenderness of the beef. And obviously the meat's cooked, and you could eat this anytime. But by letting it simmer for a little while, you should get something that's a little softer and more succulent. So I let mine simmer covered on medium-low for about 15 or 20 minutes, at which point it was time to check it out and see how we're doing. And I could pretty much tell by looking at this and feeling it with the spatula that we were in good shape. But as you may have heard me say before, there's no money in guessing. So we'll use a fork to verify. And as I suspected, my beef had cooked long enough, which means we could move on to the final step, the adding of the sliced olives. So I'm going to go ahead and stir in a whole bunch of sliced pimento stuffed green olives, which amazingly some people consider optional in this, but I definitely do not. Okay, for me these little briny bits really amplify that play between the sweet and the sour. So what we'll do is gently stir those in, so as not to knock out all the pimentos out of the centers. And then what we'll do to finish is cover this, and let it cook for another 10 to 15 minutes to let those flavors mingle, at which point we should be ready to serve. After, of course, we taste for seasoning. 
which you definitely want to do after you add the olives, because that might very well affect the saltiness. So we will give it a taste and adjust if necessary. But I was very happy with how mine tasted, so I went ahead and served it up next to some rice. And I will admit this was my second attempt at plating, since in the first attempt I just spooned it over the rice, and it looked so unappealing it was almost disrespectful. So I tried it again next to some molded rice, which did make it nominally more attractive. But anyway, that kind of stuff shouldn't really matter when it comes to comfort food, since we don't eat those foods for how they look, we eat them for how they make us feel. Specifically warm and happy. Which was exactly how this made me feel. But above and beyond those comforting effects, this stuff really is incredibly tasty. Okay, we have the sweetness from our onions and currants balancing the tanginess from that vinegar and tomato, with all those wonderfully warm spices in the background. And as I've already mentioned, those little subtly bitter, briny bites of olive really guard against any kind of palate fatigue, which I think is a real key here. So hopefully you don't skip the olives. But if you do, please know you've made a huge mistake. But anyway, that's it. My take on picadillo. Those elves might be silent, but your dinner guests will not be. They will be making all kinds of sounds of pleasure. Or at least that's the plan. So I really do hope you give this a try soon. Head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy. Enjoy.